Usually for cross-platform development in native script, we're dealing with XML files and HTML files to describe your markup and then JavaScript code for the uh, code behind. But when it comes to Android, and specifically this is for those folks that are coming from the Android development world, they might be used to deploying resources with their applications. Resources can define any kind of UI or any kind of extra stuff in your code. Maybe strings that you need to deploy or maybe colors, just any kind of packaged resources that then you can later reference in code but you define them in XML in Android format. And in fact, if you look up a lot of Android tutorials online, you'll see not only Java code or Kotlin code, but you'll also see a lot of XML. And uh, if you're new to it, you're like, what the heck is this? But those folks that are used to Android development, they'll know what to do with those files. Well, how are you going to use those files and those resources in a native script app? You can do that by deploying it along with the resources. So I'm gonna show you an example of that in this video, along with how to access those resources in your JavaScript code. That's coming up. Hey everybody, welcome back, this is Alex. You've already heard my intro about using resources to deploy with your NativeScript Android applications. Not only can you alter the behavior and the way something looks on Android using JavaScript code or CSS or markup, you can also deploy separate resource files that are usually XML, and you can deploy those with your Android applications and then access them later in code to do something with them. So I'm gonna show you how to alter a button's look right now using a resource that we're gonna deploy with the application. Check it out. So as you might be familiar, in native script apps, we have this app resources folder inside your app folder. This gets deployed with your final application as resources. So we have iOS assets here with your application icons. And uh, since this is an Android video, we'll focus more on Android side. We have the Android folder here as well. We have the source and then main. There's the main Android manifest file. And then we have this resources folder with a bunch of other icons and images here and values and so on. You could deploy your own resources here as well and access them in code. Let's see how to do that. So I'm gonna create a new folder here called layout and I'm gonna create a file here called button. Uh, let's just call it my button dot XML. All right, so this is gonna contain some styling for my button. And I found this on the internet. I admit I'm not an Android expert. So there's plenty of resources out there on the internet showing you how to do different things in Android and iOS. And uh, that's why I use NativeScript is because I don't know all the native stuff, but I do find certain useful things on the internet because Android and iOS have been around for a while. There's plenty of material out there. All right, so here's my button and here's the XML. You can kind of look at this code and see what it's doing approximately. Here's the item that we're defining and we have a layer list. And we have two items in the layer list. One is going to define the look of the shape of our item, whatever it's gonna be. I'm gonna apply it to button, but it could be anything really. So um, here is corners. We're gonna give it a corner radius and we're gonna give it a solid color. And this item is gonna define a gradient for our item. All right, now how do we access this in our code? All right, I'm gonna keep that resources file open and let's go ahead into our code. So here's mainpage.xml and we happen to have a button here. I'm gonna add a loaded event to the button and I'm gonna call the onloaded handler. So whenever this button is loaded, it's gonna call this onloaded handler and I need to define that in the code behind file. So mainpage.ts, let's go down here and do export function onloaded args and this is gonna pass us event data. Now the view itself, the button itself is going to be args.object and I'm gonna cast it as a view that gets automatically imported here, by the way. All right, so now that we have the view, this is the native script view. What I wanna do is actually get the Android widget out of it. So I'm gonna call view and you know the view has iOS property on it on iOS. When you're running on iOS, it's gonna have the iOS property filled up. But when you're running it on Android, the iOS property is gonna be null or undefined actually. And uh, there's the Android property. This is what we want. This is gonna be undefined on iOS, but if we're running on Android, it's gonna be what we need. In our case, it's gonna be android.widget.button. And I can cast it as such 
android.widget.button, but I don't have the native script platform declarations installed here in this project. Check out my video on native script platform declarations if you want to get full IntelliSense and code completion support on these native types. Anyway, let's make this simple and I'm just going to use view.android, which is going to be of any type in TypeScript. There it is. So that means I can call whatever I want since now we're pretty much in JavaScript land. And I want to do set background resource. And I need to pass something in here. I need to pass in a resource. I feel like we're operating in the blind here. You know what? I will install native script platform declarations here just so that you can see all the different functions you can call on that. So let's do that. I'm going to head out to the terminal by pressing control back tick here and say npm install TNS platform declarations. I'll do this real quick here because I've already done this on this channel before and uh, you should check out that video for sure if you want to know how to do that. So I'm going to add a references.d.ts file and I'll paste in the necessary references. Okay, now we should have code completion. So I'm going to say view.android is going to be android dot, and you can see that now I already have code completion for all this stuff, which is really cool. I get all the Android namespaces, android.widget.button. So I'm going to call this Android button. And now if I go to our Android button, if I interrogate that, you'll see all the different methods and properties that I can call on the Android button. So that's why TypeScript is so powerful here, folks. And that's why I love it. And that's why I love using NativeScript platform declarations with my NativeScript projects. We're going to call Android button dot set background. Now check it out. We have set background. We have set background color. We have set background drawable or set background resource. We can do any one of these and you can check out the Android documentation for what each one of these do. We're going to use set background resource. And now if I open up the paren, you can see what kind of parameter this expects. It expects a number. Hmm. Well, what kind of number does it expect? Well, in Android, resources have IDs. So it, it's expecting an integer ID for that resource. How do we get a hold of that resource? And by the way, the resource we're asking for is this my button right here. Well, we're going to use the native scripts application module for that. So I'm going to import star as app module, and that's coming from TNS core modules application. Nice. Now let's go back down here and say app module dot Android, and we need to get the context. That's the current running context. I'm going to save that off into its own constant. And here's what we need to get the resource. I'm going to say context dot get resource, get resources. All right, that's going to get all the resources and the reference to it. And I'm going to say get identifier. Now the identifier is the name of our XML file. So in our case, it's my button. I'm going to pass in my button there. And then it needs the folder that you put it in. In our case, we put it in the layout folder. So I'm going to indicate that layout and then context dot get package name. That's going to be the final parameter that we pass in. Oh, not content context. Okay, so this is going to run and it's going to give us the resource ID. So I'm going to save that into the res constant. All right, now that we have that resource ID, we can pass it here into set background resource. I'm going to pass that right in there. And now we're happy. Now because I've added another file here and a layout, I'm going to restart my project just in case the uh, native script CLI when it runs in the background, it will detect changes that you've done to your resources folder. But just in case, whenever I add files in a native script project, I like to restart just to make sure everything is nice and clean. Let's take a look. Whoa, look at that. Check it out. There's our button. I'm going to go ahead and close this up here and let's open up the simulator so we can see it. Now you can see that that kind of styling effect is not something you can easily get out of the box by using native script styles. So you can apply Android resources like this to your UI. Now, if we go in here and change some of this, for example, this button has a gradient on it. We have a start color and an end color. Let's say our start color will be red. FF0000. I'm going to save it. And since this is not HMR, the app has to restart. And there we go. The new my button XML file has been deployed to the package and it was picked up. And now we have a gradient that starts from red to gray. Now, if you go look up the documentation on how to use these layer lists, 
you can check out the properties here. For example, Android right, right now it's five DP device pixels. Uh, that's the little offset right there from the right and from the top. So if we change this to two, for example, and this one to two, and then this radius is the radius of that shadow back there. So I can set that to something like 10, for example, and let's take a look at that. All right, so you can see now that our offset is a little bit less, but our shadow is more circular than the actual button itself, which is kind of weird looking, but you can do things like this. If you haven't seen my video on how to apply shadows to views in Android, check that out in this channel as well. Now, one note about that particular tutorial is that once you tap the button, you're gonna lose that color. So you're gonna need to figure out a way on how to handle that tap, probably natively. You'd have to have a click event listener on the button, but because it's native script, you can just write to the native API in your JavaScript code and do that as well, and then apply whatever resources you need after the click. But the technique I just showed you does not only apply for the way a button looks. You can apply it to anything, anything that'll take a resource in Android. You can do this with strings, you can do this with colors, any kind of definition you want there. All right, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click on the subscribe button. And if you don't wanna miss any of these native script tips, tricks, and tutorials, hit the little notification bell next to the subscription button, and I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting, folks.